So of all species on Earth, humans are most affected by crooked teeth. The traditional explanation is that the child inherited the smaller jaws from his mom and the big teeth from his dad. <laughs> Could this be true? Um, this is a book called Why Raise Ugly Kids, and it was written by a dentist called Dr. Hale Huggins. You'll get it on Amazon. But he made, makes the point, a horse and donkey, if you cross them, you get a fine work animal. I used them a lot on the farm, and know what? I never saw a mule with a horse's teeth and a donkey's jaw. If you ever seen a cross of a Labrador and a poodle, do you think that the, the pup is going to inherit the Labrador's teeth and the poodle's jaws? All mouth breeders develop crooked teeth. John Flutter, he's a dentist who specializes in orthodontics in Australia. An interesting study, it was conducted by Harvold, and he was a dentist. During the 1960s, he recognized, in quotes, oral respiration associated with obstruction of the nasal airway is a common finding among patients seeking orthodontic treatment. So he noticed it. Many dentists noticed that the children coming in with the crooked teeth are mouth-breathing children. So to determine the relationship between mouth breathing and crooked teeth, he conducted a number of experiments by blocking the noses of young monkeys with silicon nose plugs. So he, he blocked their noses. So then the monkeys had to breathe through their mouth. The experiments showed that the monkeys adapted to nasal obstruction in different ways. In general, the experimental animals maintained an open mouth. All experimental animals gradually acquired a facial, uh, gradually acquired a facial appearance and dental occlusion different from those of the control animals. The mouth breeding monkeys developed crooked teeth and other facial deformities, including a lowering of the chin, a steeper mandibular plane angle. So me, this is my mandible, my lower jaw. If my face grows downwards, the angle is more pronounced. You understand? Because the face is grown in vertical height an increase in the gonial angle as compared with the eight control animals. So all the mouth breathing monkeys developed crooked teeth and he was able to replicate the same problems associated in human beings by blocking the nostrils. Um, you will get this on the, these on the internet, like it's published in the American Journal of Orthodontics since 1982, but it, it will still have relevance to this day. Crooked teeth. It's a relatively modern phenomenon. According to Mew, research has shown that this degeneration has become more marked within the past 400 years. In European countries, it appears the first documented cases of crooked teeth were found in the 1600s. Before that, if you went down to your natural history museum, you will see perfectly straight teeth. And it was found in the graves of upper middle class people. Upper middle class people had access to sugar and processed foods. And sugar has been around from something like 1070. So it's been around for a long time. This is a, a very interesting book. It's called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. Again, it's written by a dentist. And he went and visited various civilizations, including Maoris, North American Indians, Eskimos, Gaelic people living off the Hebride Islands. And on page 55 of the book, in quotes, his granddaughter had pinched nostrils and narrowed face. Her dental arches, the arch, you want a wide arch, her dental arches were deformed and her teeth were crowded. But he noticed that she was a mouth breeder. She had the typical expression of the result of modernization after the parents had adopted the, the modern <coughs> foods of commerce and abandoned the oat cake, the oatmeal porridge and seafoods. So again, the link between social progress and crooked teeth. So consensus from thousands of dentists, orthodontists, and orofacial myologists is that the mouth is closed with the lips gently together, three quarters of the tongue resting in the roof of the mouth, breathing through your nose, and correct swallowing. There should be no muscle movement in the subconscious swallow. So when you see a swallow, there shouldn't be any grimacing here. There shouldn't be any pulling in of the lips or any movement here. The swallow should be here, so there should be no movement of the face. Mouth breathing doesn't make sense. All infants, you don't have to encourage an infant of six months old to breathe through their nose. They're already doing it. All animals are nasal breeders with the exception of a dog. 
and a dog will only have its mouth open for a short period of time. Do you know of any animal on earth that breeds through its mouth, with the exception of a dog? A rabbit, a cat, a racehorse, a cow, a sheep, any animal. I have never come across any animal. And I think it's really important that we have an idea of the size of the nose. The size of the nose on your face is only about maybe 30% of your nose. So if you look in the mirror and you see this, that's your nose. And a lot of members of the general public, they feel that that's 100% of the, the nose. Whereas your nasal cavity goes well back within the skull. To get an idea of the size of your nose, put your tongue into the roof of your mouth and bring your tongue all the way back as far as you can. The floor of the nose is the roof of the mouth. That's how big your nose is. So the floor of your nose is the roof of the mouth. So you have turbinates. And the air is brought in, it swirls through turbinates before it's brought down into the lungs. Nature doesn't waste space. If the nose wasn't important, it wouldn't devote so much space to the nasal cavity. So the lips exert an estimated pressure of between 100 and 300 grams. It takes 1.7 grams to move teeth. Teenagers go to an orthodontist, are fitted with braces, and the braces apply gentle pressure to gently move the teeth but the tongue is, exerted, is capable of exerting a pressure of up to 500 grams. And also when a child is having the tongue, correct tongue posture, you don't want their tongue pressing against their top front teeth. What do you think will happen if the tongue is pressing against the top front teeth? It's going to push them out. Yeah. out. So according to Raymond Silkman, he's an orthodontist in California, the most important orthodontic appliance that you all have and carry with you 24 hours a day is your tongue. It's a very good article. I think you will, you will be interested in reading it. The article is called, Is it Mental or Is it Dental? by Raymond Silkman. You will get it on Western Price um, Foundation, You'll, if you Google it. Silkman, S-I-L-K-M-A-N. People who breathe through their nose normally have a tongue that postures up into the maxilla and when the tongue sits right up behind the top front teeth, it's maintaining the shape of the maxilla every time you swallow. So it's estimated that we have about 1,500 to 2,000 swallows a day. And every time that we swallow, the tongue moves up into the roof of the mouth, spreads, flattens and shapes the top jaw. So every time the proper tongue swallow motion takes place, it spreads up against the maxilla, activating it and contributing to that little cranial motion. Individuals who breathe through their mouths have a lower tongue posture and the maxilla does not receive the stimulation from the tongue that it should. So John Flutter, there is no doubt that the tongue has an enormous influence on dentition. Or according to Mew, lack of tongue posture, lack of tongue pressure hinders the growth of the maxilla top jaw, but conversely, the maxilla may not be able to achieve its inherited potential without assistance from tongue posture. And the question is, when you breathe through your mouth, where is your tongue? And I have the clients coming in, and I have them place three quarters of your tongue in the roof of the mouth. So if you try it, have your tongue in the roof of the mouth, and now try and breathe through your mouth. Can you do it? So the shape of the top jaw is the shape of the tongue. And the growth of the face is forward. So this would have been a client of John Mew's. So you see already the jaws were setting back a little bit. You see here. And you see that there's a little bit you can see it. And he brought everything forward. Straight teeth. So it's not just about straightening teeth, but it's developing the face. So when the face grows correctly, the teeth are straight.